somebody something. Amen. If you're not singing, how are you encouraging somebody? And if you're not moving your mouth, how are you worshiping? We're supposed to worship with all that we are. And so let's see if we can give it a little more oomph. Alright? God deserves it, doesn't he? on this. 
this is Jack and Pulse. Okay, guys. Here we go.
I feel woke up now.
done is you have just taught people and admonished people that there is freedom in Christ. That needs to understand what true freedom is. And now you've just heard the people of God proclaim it. And what you've just done is worship the great I am who is sufficient for all of your needs. You see how important worship is? Rigo Escobar is our deacon of the week, and if you have any needs throughout the week, if you'll call the deacon of the week, their number is in uh, the bulletin, and if it's an emergency, they'll get in touch with me. Um, we got a great uh, bunch of guys that want to minister to your needs, and so please, if, if uh, you need a word of encouragement, if you need someone to share with, uh, someone to pray with you, give our deacon of the week a call, and uh, they are there for you. someone else. You just didn't know it. It's a, uh, it's a, a two water bottle sermon today. So. <clears throat> um, I want to take just a minute and thank uh, everybody for the, the gifts and the cards and the kind words for uh, pastor appreciation for the great celebration that we had uh, uh, last night and, and it was just a really good time and, and everybody made us feel really special. We had great entertainment, um, great food, um, great fellowship, but, but I do have to say, and I'm going to say it while James is up here, that the highlight of the night <laughs> was, was James and I um, dancing the wobble. <laughs> so, we, uh, Stuff. James didn't know he had it in him, and I didn't know I had it in me either. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was great. So, um, <clears throat> we appreciate it on behalf of myself and and uh, my family. <clears throat> um, guys, people have come to America for centuries uh, seeking freedom, uh, freedom from dictators, uh, religious freedom. Uh, freedom to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Um, and while, you know, here in America, we may be free to, to choose our leaders, and uh, currently, though I think it's eroding quickly, currently we're free to worship um, here in America as we choose, and, and, and we're free to choose our careers and to pursue happiness. Um, despite all of that freedom, you can still be a slave in America. And it's the worst kind of slavery that there is missing what true freedom really is. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about. Turn over to John chapter 8. And uh, we're going to find out this morning what it is to truly be free in America. John 8, verses 31 to 36. And guys, forgive uh, my throat. Still, the voice is not there 100%. But after service last week, it was gone completely. All I could do was whisper. So I appreciate everybody praying for me this past week. Let's look at what Jesus said in John 8, 31 through 36. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said... If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then, important word there, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. <clears throat> now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, <clears throat> but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. <clears throat> Jesus came offering freedom. He came offering freedom to the Jews. He came offering freedom to the Gentiles. Um, 
But the Jews were so arrogant that they could not even admit that they were in slavery. Um, when you think back through the history of Israel, they had been enslaved in Egypt, but God set them free. They had been enslaved in Babylon, but God brought them back to their own country. And now they were in slavery in Rome. And yet here the, the Jews were telling Jesus, we're descendants of Abraham. We've never been a slave to anyone. And that same arrogance that would not allow them to, <clears throat> to admit their own history, and each time that they went into slavery to their enemies, it was because they had turned their back on God. And that same arrogance that prevented them from admitting that they had been in slavery throughout their history <clears throat> is the same pride that prevented them from seeing what they were really enslaved to. Sin. And that's the worst kind of slavery. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Does anyone in here ever sin? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you never sin, oh, Bill says he never sins. Oh, no, you were saying you do sin. Okay. <laughs> anyone in here never sin? Good thing, because I was going to point you out if you register. <laughs> If you ever sin, then you may be a slave to sin and its consequences. Amen. You may be a slave to sin and its consequences. And no matter how hard you try to be free of it, no matter how much you hate to admit that you're enslaved to it, the reality is you are still a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. But you might be thinking, but wait a minute, I live in America. In America, I'm free. I came to this country to be free. I'm not a slave to anyone or to anything. Kind of taking that same uh, uh, approach as the Jews in Jesus' day. But you know what? According to Jesus... You may still be in slavery. Take a look at what Jesus said in verse 34 again. Look now, if you, if you, if you want to argue, argue with Jesus. <clears throat> All right, I'm the messenger. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. When he says that, he means listen up. I, I got something for, for you to hear. And, and, it, and it's absolute truth. All right, there's no gray areas, folks. Truth is truth. <laughs> All right, it's absolute or else it's not truth. All right, so Jesus said, listen up. I'm going to tell you the truth now. And look what he says. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And so even though you live in America, the home of the brave, the land of the free, you may still be a slave. And it's the worst kind of slavery because slavery to sin leads to death and exclusion from, from God. Amen. It leads to death and exclusion from God. You see, the Jews considered themselves to be the sons and daughters of God because of their heritage. Because they were descendants of Abraham. But Jesus differed with them. He said, you're not sons and daughters of God. You don't belong to God's household. Why? Because you're a slave. Hmm. And a slave has no permanent place in the house. Only a son does. And the Jews were enslaved to their sin. So they weren't sons and daughters of God. They were slaves to sin. So they therefore had no permanent place in the presence of God, in the family of God. They were excluded from God forever. 
And if you're a slave to sin, you are excluded from the family of God forever. Unless you get set free. Because there's freedom for the captives. Well, then the big question is, is how do we get set free? How do we go from being slaves to sons and daughters of God? How do we go from being those who have no permanent place in the family of God, in the household of God, to being sons and daughters with a permanent place in the presence of God for all of eternity? How do we make that switch? How do we get set free from what enslaves us? Well, take a look at verse 36. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The answer to the question of how you get set free and go from being a slave to being a son and daughter of God is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, if the Son, referring to himself, the Son of God, if the Son sets you free, it's really freedom. Amen. It's not imagined, but it's real. You are then free, and he, and he, and he accentuates it there. He puts the exclamation point on it. You are free indeed. No question about it. Mm -hmm. So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And so here's how the freedom process begins. Number one, guys, is it requires that you accept the truth. That you accept the truth. Jesus said there, I tell you the truth. <clears throat> the only way to be set free is to accept the truth that Jesus shares with us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the truth. The way, the truth, the life. Amen. And so freedom <clears throat> begins with accepting the truth. Look at what Jesus said in verses 31 through 32. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if there's that conditional word again that we find so often in the scriptures that a lot of people like to just kind of read by very quickly. But it says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And only, only when you put your faith in Him as your Lord and Savior are you set free from the consequences of sin, of sin which is death and exclusion from God. Because remember, a slave has no place in the household. Only sons and daughters. And so it begins by putting our faith in Christ as our Lord and Savior so that we are set free from the consequences, which is death and exclusion from the household of God. And the reason that Jesus is the only one who can set you free is because he is the only one who suffered the consequences and overcame the consequences of our sin because he took our place on the cross. Amen. And so you see, all roads don't set you free. All belief systems don't set you free. Only Jesus sets you free because he is the only one who took the consequences of sin for us and overcame them when he rose from the dead. Amen. And so all other ways to freedom fall short. There's no way, any other way to be set free 
than through the one who took the penalty of our sin. And that's Jesus. And so that's why Jesus says, so if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Freedom by all other means is a lie. It's faux freedom. It's not real. It's a deception of the mind. Only freedom through Christ is freedom indeed. Secondly, to be free requires the power of the Spirit. Requires the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that empowers us to overcome the desire to sin. See, you may be set free from the consequences of sin, but you might still be enslaved to sin. That endless cycle of doing what you know is wrong, feeling guilty, feeling ashamed, Asking God to forgive you. Saying you're going to do better next time. The next opportunity that sin presents itself with, you fall right back into it again. And then you feel all guilty and you feel ashamed of yourself. And you get all down on yourself. And you say, I'm going to do better next time. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm tired of the guilt. I'm tired of the shame. And the next time the opportunity rolls around, you fall right back into it again. Amen. Only by the power of the Spirit can you overcome that desire. Amen. Yes. Because you see, when you put your faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior, something happens. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside you and empower you for Christian living. Amen. So you can try as hard as you want on your own, and you'll never be free of sin. Right. Because you don't have it in you unless you rely upon what God has put in you, and that is His Spirit. Keep your finger there in John chapter 8. And if you can turn real quickly over to Galatians chapter 5, turn with me. If, if not, it'll be up on the screen. But look at what Paul said in Galatians 5, verse 16. And this really just sums up in an incredible way. Our second point, Paul says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. It can't get much clearer than that. He says, if you live by the Spirit, if you keep in step with the Spirit, if you follow the guidance of the Spirit, if you submit to the leading of the Spirit, if you rely upon the Spirit's power then you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Paul told the Romans that too. He was very open with them. He said, you know, the things that I want to do, I don't. And the things I don't want to do, I do. And he said, who's going to rescue me from this body of death? He said, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That's the only way. That's the only way to break the cycle. But you know what has to be in place, though? And the Lord just gave this to me right before the service. Don't have it in my notes. But you know another key element to being set free? Is you've got to want to be free. Amen. Amen. You may say, I want to be free, and you may get tired of dealing with the guilt, and get tired of dealing with the shame, and get tired of dealing with the same old cycle over and over again. But in reality, you enjoy your sin. And you know what? Sin's pleasurable. But that's why it enslaves. But sin also leads to death. Yes. See, that's the great lie of the devil. Is he makes sin enjoyable, but he doesn't tell you the ultimate consequences until it's too late. And it's like, oh, woe is me. I can't believe this is happening to me. You've been warned. 
The truth says that the wages of sin is death. You know now. So if you continue in your sin, don't complain when the consequences come. I've just told you. And so you've got to want to break free of the sin. You've got to say, I don't care if it feels good. I don't care if it benefits me in the short term. I don't care if it makes me look good. I don't care if it's more convenient. I don't care if it's more profitable. I don't care if it uh, moves me up the career ladder. If it's sin, I don't want it. That's right. And then you live by the Spirit of God, and you will not gratify the desires of the Spirit. You want to keep doing it? You might as well just turn me off right now. But you've got to come to the point where you say, you know what? I'm fed up with it. I know it's killing me. It's killing my family. It's ruining my relationship with God. I'm sick of what it's doing to me. And I won't do it anymore by the power of God. Amen. And then third, or I guess it would maybe be fourth now. <clears throat> but you've got to hold to the truth. Look at what Jesus said there again in verses 31 and 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus says, If you hold to my teaching... You are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. See how it falls into place there? You see the order? You hold to Jesus' teachings. You have to be fully committed to them. Not on again, off again. Not just when you get all down and out and your life's falling apart and then you say, oh, okay, I'm going to start going back to church. I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start praying again. And then when things start going smooth, then you go back in your old habits again. That's not holding to the truth. That's not being sold out, fully committed to Jesus' teachings. Holding to it means you're in it for the long term. Mm -hmm. A lifetime. Amen. And Jesus says, when you fully commit to it, you hold to it, then you're going to know the truth because you're going to be growing in the teachings of God's Word. You're going to know God's Word, God's will, more and more, and you'll be set free from sin. Amen. But you know, here's the funny thing. Is that word when I was reading it there? If you hold to my teaching, jumped out at me. The word teaching. Jesus said, if you hold to it, you'll be, you're truly my disciples and the truth will set you free. How in the world is something going to set you free that you don't know? Yeah. How do you hold to something that you don't spend any time in? You've got to commit to it and then stay with it. And how do you stay with it? You read the Bible. You pray and ask for God's discernment and wisdom. You get into church more than once or twice a week. You listen intently to the message. You listen to the teachings of the songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. You study God's Word. You put it into practice. Yes. Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yes. Now, I'm not talking, guys, about sinless perfection, but I'm talking about progressive sanctification. Mm -hmm. Meaning, as you get to know the teachings of Jesus more and more, you sin less and less. Amen. If you hold to my teachings, you're truly my disciples. Then, because you're holding to them, you're progressing in the wisdom and the knowledge of the word. You're putting it in place in your life. Then you know the truth that will set you free. Amen. 
And you see, the, the Word of God does something really cool for us. <clears throat> what it does is it puts in place in our lives parameters and boundaries that protect us from sinning. The Word of God puts in place in our lives the, the parameters and the boundaries that protect us from falling into enslavement to sin. David said in Psalm 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. That was just another way of saying I'm holding to the teachings of the Word of God so that I won't sin. I'm putting in place in my life certain parameters, certain boundaries that the Word of God teaches so that I won't sin. <clears throat> and see, when you live within the boundaries and the parameters of God's Word, that's where freedom is found. Um, psychologists uh, found a rather interesting uh, truth. It used to be thought that fences around playgrounds um, inhibited kids, made them feel confined so that they couldn't really enjoy their playtime. And so they, they did some studies and what they did is they removed the fences from around the playgrounds. Wide open spaces now for the kids. No confinement. No boundaries, no parameters. And you know what happened? The kids all huddled into the center of the playgrounds <laughs> and showed signs of insecurity. They were afraid to play, afraid to express themselves, afraid to play with enthusiasm. So you know what they did? They put the fences back again. And then you know what happened? The kids felt safe. The kids felt secure. And they noticed within the kids a renewed sense of enthusiasm. And they played with more freedom now. Because they were safe and secure from the danger out there. When we hold to God's truth and place His boundaries and His parameters in our lives, we are safe and we are secure and we are truly free to experience life and to enjoy it to its fullest. Amen. But when we remove all constraints, then we leave ourselves open to the enemy who comes in and enslaves us. But you know, to experience that kind of freedom, <clears throat> um, it takes courage. It takes faith. It takes willing to make a risk. Because you see, God's wisdom goes against conventional wisdom. God's way of doing things, as you guys hear me say all the time, God's way of doing things is completely different than the psychologists who are always proving themselves wrong. God's wisdom is different than the philosophers, different than science, different from the truth of the day. And so it takes courage, it takes faith, it takes a willingness to take a risk to do it God's way. But you see, the, the, the convention of the day, the wisdom, and I put that in quotes because it is a wisdom. Anything that comes out of the world is a wisdom. It's foolishness. But the wisdom of the day says that freedom is only found when all the constraints are removed. All the boundaries, all the parameters are removed. I get to do it my way. No one's going to tell me what I should or shouldn't do. No holds barred. Then I'm free. Hmm. And you know what? That's just a lie from the devil to keep you enslaved to your sin. Mm -hmm. The devil's made a fool out of you. 
When you buy into the wisdom of the world, the philosophies of the world, when you buy into the lie that to be free is to do it your own way, to believe your own way, to act your own way, to be your own God of your own destiny, the devil made a fool out of you. Amen. And you're still a slave to your sin. But to be really free takes courage. It takes a willingness to live differently than what the world says and to follow God's way. There was a, uh, a spy that was captured um, and sentenced to death by a Persian general. And uh, what was kind of unusual about this person, general, is that he treated the execute the, those condemned to execution by giving them a choice, <clears throat> and he always gave them a choice: the firing squad or the big black door, right there. It was kind of like uh, the ultimate, let's make a deal. <laughs> Do you want what you got in your hand? Do you want to take a chance on the curtain where Carol Merrill is standing? That was the model that did let's make a deal when I was a kid. Not, not anymore. <clears throat> and so the general would tell the condemned, he would say, firing squad or that big black door. Well, the spy that had been convicted thought about it, pondered it for a long time, and then he chose the firing squad. And soon after, of course, he was shot to death. And the general said this. He said, they always prefer the known to the unknown. Yet we gave them a choice. They always prefer the known to the unknown, even though we give them a choice. And his aide, the guy that worked with the general, kind of his gopher boy, um, asked the general one time, he said, uh, what's behind the black door? And the general said, freedom. Hmm. He says, freedom, but he says, I've only known a few brave enough to take it. Hmm. Raymond McHenry commented this, far too many people choose familiar slavery rather than taking a risk for freedom. Far too many people choose familiar slavery rather than taking the risk for freedom. I wonder, are you willing to take a risk and do it God's way to be free of sin, or would you rather do it the familiar way and remain enslaved? Because God's way is the only door to freedom. Amen. So which will you choose today? I want to take just a, <clears throat> a moment for you to ponder God's truth. Remember Jesus said, I tell you the truth. What you just heard is the truth of God. And I want you to sit and think today, am I going to remain a slave in America? A slave to my sin when Christ has offered me freedom? Are you going to are you going to choose the familiar way? Or are you going to do it God's way and be set free? Mm. Just bow your heads for a minute and close your eyes. And I want you to think about that. You've been given a choice, as the general said. Which way will you choose?
Father, if we could only see what is right before our eyes. The door to freedom. No more chains. No more being enslaved to what leads to death. What leads to guilt and shame and the endless cycle that we can never get off. The sin that entangles us and hinders us. pray you remove the blinders of the world. You remove the wisdom of the age, the philosophies of men, the ignorance of science. And let people see truth. Your way is the only door to freedom. And we can truly be free in America. Lord, that we could truly be free in tyranny when we're free from sin. Lord, what a shame it is that so many people have given their lives to keep America free, and yet there are people still enslaved in this country because they're enslaved to their sin, the worst kind of slavery. I'd have people make the right choice this morning. No longer choosing the familiar, but trusting you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to do the invitation a little bit different this morning. Um, I'm not going to ask people to come up, but. I just want to flat out ask you, do you want to be set free from sin this morning? Set free from its consequences, which is death and exclusion from God. The way that you do that is by first off putting your faith in Christ as your Lord and Savior so that your sins can be washed away and you can be set free from death and included in the family of God. But maybe you said, well, I've already done that. Well, then if you are and you're still enslaved, then what you need to do is start relying upon the power of God's Spirit in your life and walking according to His will and way. Following the Spirit, not going your own path. And then three, you need to be willing to hold to, be fully committed to, grow in the teachings of God's Word because that is the truth that sets you free. Putting in place in your life the parameters, the boundaries, the truth that will allow you to overcome and be set free from the sin that is entangling you. So I want to, what I want you to do is I want everyone to bow your heads. Bow your heads one more time. It's not a big movement. <clears throat> Close your eyes. All right, nobody looking around. <clears throat> nobody looking around. And this is just kind of your way of making a choice to no longer follow the familiar way, but to follow God's way and go through the door of freedom. If you want to be set free this morning, whether it's by putting your faith in Christ, which is the first step, or whether it's by surrendering to God's way and saying, you know what, I'm going to start doing it His way. I'm going to start relying on His power. I'm going to get victory. No more enslavement to sin for me. If you're willing to do those things, will you just slip your hand up? Tired of being enslaved. Amen. You may put your hands down. God saw that as, a, as your commitment to Him. And if it's your first time you've ever put your faith in Christ, you've just gone from death to life. By faith, your sins are forgiven, the consequences have been removed. 
means you'd already done that, but you're saying, you know what, even though I've done that, I'm tired of living in sin, I'm tired of that endless cycle, and so I've just made a commitment to put in place in my life the teachings of Jesus' Word, I'm going to hold to them, I'm going to start following the Spirit instead of the way of the world. God's going to honor that, and He's going to break the cycle, He's going to break the chains, and you're going to be free. chains are going to stay right here and you're going to walk out of here in freedom. Because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Father, I thank you that you have honored the commitment of these people this morning. Lord, it doesn't take praying a little prescribed little prayer. Lord, it just takes the faith of the heart. And these people have raised their hand in faith. Walk with them, Father. Reveal your spirit to them that they may follow. Lord, open their eyes that they may no longer believe the lie of the devil and of the world, and they'll follow your truth, the only truth. And Lord, because we prayed and we've stepped out in faith that is already done, For that, we give you thanks. It's in the name of Jesus who's done it that we pray. Amen. We're going to stand up and celebrate your freedom. You are now truly free in America. You have been set free from the sin that has enslaved you. And so we're going to give God thanks. Stand up and let's just sing your freedom this morning.